playing an early access game is a little bit like going on your first Tinder date. Now, hear me out, right? You like what you've seen so far, the photos are great, you like the bio, it sounds amazing, you're hopeful for the future, but the reality of the matter is, you don't know if you'll get along, you don't know if they are who they say they are, you don't even know if they're an aging, balding man who's catfished you, and they're actually called the day before. And what if that Tinder date never ended? A Groundhog Day that just goes on and on and on. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that all early access games are bad, that's not the point of this video. In fact, there's a bunch I've really, really enjoyed, particularly thinking of games like Grounded, The Long Dark, Ark. There's even some games on this list that I really enjoy still. But today, we're diving back through 10 games that are stuck in early access limbo, still haven't come out, and people are waiting, people want to know, when will these games come out? Let's start with number 10. A game that on paper is my dream game. I mean, it's a survival game where you get to play as dinosaurs. Yes, that's right. A game where you play as dinosaurs, I mean, I really can't ignore it. It's called The Isle, and it launched in December 2015 as a bare bones early access game where you played as an animal, a dinosaur. Like, it kind of sounds a similar concept to Ancestors. I really enjoyed Ancestors. I got bored of it after a while, but it had some really cool game mechanics. Now this one takes it to another level by adding dinosaurs into the mix. And I really can't ignore any game that has dinosaurs in it because, because they're dinosaurs and they're freaking awesome, right? What doesn't sound so amazing is waiting eight years for the game to be finished. Now, don't get me wrong, when you look at what the game's turning out to be, it has so much potential and the graphics look so awesome. And I also understand that they've had a load of issues. In 2019, like three, four years after they started working on the game, they completely changed what systems they were using. I'm not here to say whether these games should still be in early access, shouldn't. I'm not here to debate the ethics of early access games staying in that stage for so long. I guess the big question is, is there any end in sight? Actually, on their Steam page, the question's asked, approximately how long will the game be in early access? And the answer they give is, the game will leave early access once the core experience has been polished to our high standards. Well, their high standards has taken quite a long time, but fair enough. Developing games is not an exact science, so we cannot say for sure how long this will take, but hopefully you will join us on the journey getting there. Well, I mean, lots of people are definitely joining them on that journey. They've got mostly positive to very positive reviews on Steam. If you go through Reddit, there's a bunch of people that really enjoy this game. If you look on YouTube, there's a bunch of people playing the game who seem to love it. Uh, other people playing the game who don't love it as much and people debating whether it's worth the price that you're paying for it at its current stage. But I think the more you follow the journey, the more people are, are seeming excited about what's to come. Uh, how long will we wait? I have no clue. On to game number 9, and it's a game that you've probably seen people playing online. It's a game that uh, I haven't played because I'm an absolute wimp, but I really love watching other people play because I like watching people be scared. We're talking about Phasmophobia, and no, it hasn't been in early access as long as some of the other games on this list, but people are excited, people want it out, people want to know how long will it be in early access, when will the final finished polished version, does that even exist anymore, is there a polished version? When will it be out, right? It released in September 2020 by Kinetic Games. It even won the Game Awards for Best Indie Game. Like, it's a game that's really loved by people. In fact, if you go on Twitch, if you go on YouTube, you can find some awesome content of people playing it. Like I mentioned, I spent so many hours watching people play this game. It's a four-player online psychological horror that will make you poop your pants. At least it would make me poop my pants because I just don't deal well with it with jump scares, right? So you play as a paranormal team that gets to investigate this paranormal activities in these weird haunted houses and figure out what the culprit is, what kind of spirit the culprit is, what kind of malevolent being is, is haunting this house. And it's done really well, very positive reviews, overwhelmingly positive reviews, and that's why it's on this list, because people want to know, when will it be out? What, what's going on? How long will it stay in early access? And what they actually say is, the current plan is to get a full release late 2024. Sounds great, excited, it's, it's not too far away. However, this may change depending on features added and how the game will progress through early access. So as usual with, with early access games, it's 
as as long as we won. What I will say is the team that are working on this game are awesome. You can see some really cool interviews online with the developers. They're really involved with the community. They play the game and they enjoy the game and they, they seem to really enjoy talking to others and some of the developers are really funny. So I have high hopes for this game. I have high hopes for how they treat the community and I think, fingers crossed, they will stick to what they're saying. On to game number eight. And this is one that has been in early access for a while, right? Seven Days to Die, 10 years in early access. Released 13th of December 2013 by The Fun Pimps. This again is a game that I both really enjoy playing and enjoy watching other people play. It combines a bunch of elements that I really like. Survival in an open world setting, it involves tower defense, it involves psychological horror, it involves RPG elements. And people really enjoy this game. They play it online, it's got very positive reviews on Steam. Mostly. Some people do highlight that it's been in early access for a very long time. In fact, on, on Reddit, the conversation goes on and on. One Reddit user said, look, I enjoy the game but can't recommend a game celebrating 10 years in alpha. Steam early access. Any developer publisher would take one look at this as a dumpster fire and cancel it so hard and fast. Valve should put a limit on the early access. No game should be allowed to sit in early access for the rest of its existence. Again, we're not here to debate the ethics behind this. We're not here to debate whether it's right or wrong for a game to sit there. I have my opinions, I'm sure you have yours. Maybe let's have a conversation in the comments. People certainly have their way of feeling and, and it's on both sides. Some people hate the fact games are sitting in early access for so long. Some people actually like it. They feel like it, it almost guarantees that the game's going to have continual development. Although, that's not always the case because there's games that have sat in early access and have just stayed there with nothing being done to them for years. We're on to number seven and I love this game so much. You get to play as beavers. It's a city building game with some really, really cool mechanics and, and some difficulty to it, especially when you take into account droughts and the different factions and how they work and, and all the different updates that they've been doing to the game and what they've included. Like, the fun thing about following this journey has been going in the first time and playing for a run and then six months later diving back in and it being completely different with so much more to do. It's been a really cool journey to follow and it's not been that long a journey. It's a game that came out in September 2021, so not that long. Two to five years because they did start playtesting it in December 2018. But the reason I'm including it in this list is because I'm freaking excited for it to come out and I wanna see the finished product come out and I wanna see people jump on this. And it's already getting a lot of love on Reddit and YouTube. People really like this game. Uh, it's super cozy with difficulty. The mechanics take some getting used to. The droughts really can fuck you up really hard if you don't know what's coming up. But once you get the hang of it, it's a game that has so much potential and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they fully do with this. So how long are we expecting this game to sit in early access? Well, interestingly enough on Steam it says we expect the early access to last at least a year. Well, it's, it's definitely been a year. While we have ideas for what needs to be done before the full release, player feedback affects that and we're ready to put in additional time. They are putting in additional time and it's definitely worth it. As I said, every time I jump back into the game, they've added really cool stuff that, that keeps me motivated and makes me want to play. But I do wonder how long is too long and how long before something else comes out that diverts my attention away and, and they've kind of lost that opportunity. Do you think that is a worry for these games? Next, on to number six, and we're covering a type of game that I wouldn't normally cover on this channel, right? Uh, it's called Blade and Sorcery, and it's a VR game. And the reason I don't normally cover VR games is A, because I don't have a VR headset, B, because the reason I don't have one is waiting for enough games that I actually want to play. And this is one of them, this is one that's really caught my attention. It came out in 2018, so it, it sat there for a while, right? But you can kind of understand it a bit more when you're talking about VR. And it's had overwhelmingly positive reviews, so they're obviously doing some really cool work. And Watching people play this game really makes me want to try it out. Does it still look janky? Yes. Is it at the point where I want it to be to jump in? Not quite yet, but it's one where I am enjoying watching the journey and seeing if they either blow it out of the park and, and finish, polish it off really, really well, or encourage other companies to do something similar and to play around with that concept because I really want to, to swing a sword around and do some really cool slashing. It, it sounds awesome. 
So what does the company say about how long the game will all stay in early access? Well, they say due to the original small scope of the game, it was initially expected that the early access period would be as little as six months. Well, it's been years, so that's definitely come and gone. However, fans have shown us such overwhelming support and enthusiasm that it has allowed us to increase the scope of the game dramatically, as seen by the continued expansion over the years. Our estimated finish line has now shifted to approximately Q1 2024. So, we could almost be there, although they do continue to say that could very easily become Q2 2024. So, either we're almost there, or almost almost there, or it just shifts completely and, and we don't know how long it will stay in early access. What I will say is that I can kind of understand it with VR. It still needs so much improving, there's still not so much work to do in this field that I don't feel as bad about a game sitting in early access for this long in VR as I do about games that now have so many lookalikes and competitors that have come and gone in a polished state. And I'm excited to see how it turns out. How about you? We're down to number five and we're talking Valheim, another game that I've absolutely loved. I've actually played some on this channel. It's a game I've really, really enjoyed. And again, one that hasn't sat in early access for that long. It released in February 2021 by Iron Gate and yeah, it's not been in early access for that long, but people are excited to know when will it finally be out of early access? Like, people love this game. I'm sure you've seen playthroughs on YouTube and if you haven't, you should definitely go watch some. And it's a game that's got very to overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. It's a game that's won a bunch of awards. It's a game that's really loved, right? And the main reason it's on this list isn't because it's been a ridiculously long time, it's just because I'm excited for it to finally be out of early access. Um, and yeah, I want to know how long that will take. On their Steam it says, uh, we don't know. So yeah, they're quite clear, we don't know how long it's gonna take. Uh, we're currently working on our seventh biome, the Ashlands, I think that's come and gone now. And after that we have one more to complete, the Deep North, before we'll consider the game to be version 1.0. It's a pretty safe bet to say that Valheim will be in active development for at least another two years, counting from January 2023. So cool, they, they want to add more stuff to the game, they've got a roadmap, they're saying what, end of this year maybe? Uh, so fingers crossed, it won't be too long away, end of this year, maybe beginning of next year. Do you even care about it being in early access? I, I'd like to know what your thoughts are, hit me up in the comments. On to number four, and another game that has sat has sat in early access, it's just chilled there, right? I don't care what other games come out, I don't care how long it is, uh, this idea is worth it. We are talking Project Zomboid, right? 10 years, it was released November 2013 by the Indie Stone. Yeah, people really love this game. I, I haven't actually tried it, it's not a game that, that stood out to me, although I think I will. I've really enjoyed watching Colby Kevin play it, I've really enjoyed watching another couple of streamers play it. So yeah, I will jump into it at some point. It's a zombie survival game where you loot, build, craft, fight, do all that cool survival stuff, we know it. Hardcore RPG skill sets, really big map, massively customizable. Like, it's it's a bunch of really cool stuff, in theory, but 10 years seems like a ridiculously long time. Like, I'm not gonna lie, especially for this type of game. I get that they're doing a bunch of updates, I get that they want to make this massive and huge, but compared to other stuff that's come out, I just, I don't get it, and maybe that's why I need to try the game, because it's definitely got people that really love it, and on Reddit, a lot of people that really defend it. As I said, people who are like, I don't care that it's an early access still, it means I get constant updates to it. That's great. But what about the company? When do they say it will leave early access? They just say they avoid ETAs. Like, what I'm gonna say, we don't, we don't want to set a day, why would we set a day? Like, they do go into more detail than that. They say that it's a more ambitious game that they could have ever hoped for. It has grown massively over the years, it's been a roller coaster. So, they're not gonna say. Like, we don't know when Project Zomboid will leave early access, we don't know if it ever will. There's definitely some theories on Reddit, but then there's always theories on Reddit, right? So I don't trust anything, I don't know if it's a scam, I don't know if it's a good thing, a bad thing. Um, that's not what I'm here to figure out. I just thought it was interesting that these games just kind of uh, are sitting there in early access. A bunch of them, right? We've looked at quite a few games that have been in early access for a while. So yeah, I think it's an interesting conversation. I don't think there's a, a right or wrong answer and I definitely don't think there's a a right way to do it. I think it very much depends on, on the company, how they treat the community, how honest they are and see-through they are with, 
with how long this is going to take and and also kind of if the game's fun whilst it is an early access does it really matter if it's an early access and, and people are enjoying it and it's not that buggy kind of different if you're if you're paying quite a bit of money for for a game that's like bug ridden and can't be played like and it just stays that way for 10 years that kind of sucks right but most of the games on this list aren't in that situation they have made really cool developments that is going somewhere it's just a question of when will it get there? Will the date ever end? Do you want the date to ever end? We're down to number three and another game that has sat there for 10 years. A game that in all honesty some of the updates look amazing and when I first started hearing about it I was super excited um, but the longer it's been the less excited I am and to be honest until researching for this video and looking at all the cool videos on YouTube that have come out about where it is at the moment, I'd kind of completely forgotten about this game. We're talking about Star Citizen. In 2013, people started being able to play modules of these games, with the final module being released in 2015, and that's had constant updates until now. As I said, it looks pretty cool, but it's also something huge that they're working on. But after more than a decade, there's still no set release date. And this is a really interesting one because when you go on Reddit the conversation gets quite heated between two points of view. One point of view being this is a, a massive game that probably won't be finished for 10 years and that deserves all this time that's been put into it. People literally say that it could be another 6 to 8 years, so 2029 to 2031 before this game is released. But the fact that those dates are being thrown around is just wild. That is, that's a game that could potentially be in early access for 20 years. And as I said, some people are fine with that because they feel it's valid. It's a game that, that if it ends up being as good as they say, will have been worth that journey. Other people actually highlight the fact that the player base is, is a lot older than that of some other games and that they've literally got friends who, who gave money to this game and have passed away before the game was, was even finished. Obviously, this could, this could happen in any situation with any game anyone's waiting for. The point here being more that the player base was older and that 20 years is, is quite a long time to wait for a game to, to finally be finished. I haven't played this game because my computer couldn't handle it. Um, I would like to once I have a computer that can, but I'm definitely not sure I want to jump on an eight year journey with them, especially not when the journey has already been, been 10 years long. What do you think? Is it a game that you've tried? Is it a game that you, you tried years ago and want to jump back into? Because it definitely looks like it's had some cool development. Down to number two, and a game that I actually discovered through Let's Game It Out being dumb on videos, but a game that, that I've really enjoyed watching the journey. Another one that hasn't sat in early development for that long, um, but I think deserves a mention because people are excited for it and people really love it. It's called Satisfactory and it was released in September 2019. It's got overwhelmingly good reviews on Steam and for good reason. It looks really fun and the stuff you can do on it looks absolutely wild. And the team behind it are really involved in the community and seem to, to really want to grow this game and release cool updates and do some really cool stuff with it. It's a first person open world factory building game. I love this kind of game, I know it's not for everyone, but it's really cool to see how many ways to play these games there are, you know, some people like breaking them, some people like building cool stuff, some people get really into numbers, which I will never understand, but fair enough. There's actually a game that came out on a Xbox Game Pass that looked kind of similar, I tried it out, it wasn't as fun, I wish I could play this, I can't right now because my computer would definitely blow up. How long will it stay in early access? They say, the truth is that we will stay in early access until we feel that it's finished. Yeah, fair enough. Like, <laughs> I can't, like, it's a good answer. You know, when people say this, it's a good answer. Whether it's right or wrong, I, I'm not smart enough to know that. I don't know the ins and outs of uh, who it's hurting and who it isn't. It's something that I will dive into. It's something that I might cover in a different video. Um, that wasn't the point this time, but I think it's a fair answer, you know. It will be finished when it's finished. There's an element of me thinking, you know, it's it's kind of cool to be part of that journey and, and they're allowing us to be part of that journey. That would have never happened before. Then there's the other point of view of we want to pay for a game that's finished, polished, that the team aren't going to decide halfway through, you know, we're done with this. People aren't really enjoying it. We're going to stop releasing updates. I was enjoying it and now, I've, like, you know, I'm stuck with a half-finished game I paid for. I get that. Like, I think both points of view are valid. What does matter more to me is that they're releasing constant updates and that the updates are worth it as well, that they're actually making some big changes that are worthwhile. 
that they're listening to the community is another big part of that for me because otherwise what's the point in involving the community at that point if you're just gonna piss them off on purpose we're on to the last one we're talking about scum a game that was released in 2018 it sat there for a while like we're talking five years or so, right? It's been a while, not the longest one on the list, I know that, but what's interesting to me is that so many other games of this type have come out. Now, don't get me wrong, this game looks sick. There's some really cool elements to it, but there's also elements that do remind me a bit of Player Unknown, that also unfortunately remind me a bit of the day before. Like, I'm hoping it's not like that, and from the gameplay I'm seeing, it's it's definitely not. Like, I, I get that. I just think that there's a lot of other games that are kind of doing this type of thing. And I get that maybe that's why it's in early development for this long, right? Because they want to really make it the best game it can be. When asked about how long it will stay in early development, the team says Scum will be in development for at least one full year during early access. Okay, that was this written when it came out, so... It's been five years, they thought one, so that's a big difference, right? Additional community request ideas might shift the final release date. Okay, I mean, it's definitely shifted the final release date, yeah, it's not, it's not been one year. The question is, how long will it be? The question is, are you interested? Are you willing to wait that long? It's had mostly positive reviews, it looks really awesome. I really like that they've added some personality to it, some dumbness, some mechs, like, some over-the-top elements, but I do worry about what the final game will look like, and I also kind of worry whether I'll care at all by the time it does get there. So that's it, that's 10 games that are still in early access. Let me know if there's any you've played, any you want to play, and what do you think? Does it really matter that games get stuck in early access for this long? Should there be a time limit? Are there any ethical dilemmas involved with it? Uh, yeah, have a conversation. Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I'll catch you next time.